Ah, hello. <laughs> this is you uh, talking to uh, George Lees, the Scotsman. I still live in Scotland. Sean Connery lives uh, in the tax havens for reasons that are known only to him and his friends like Alex Salmond, Nicola Sturgeon and uh, David Murray. Which part of the story shall I tell you first? <laughs> Let me tell you about the links of this man, who is from a very poor part of Scotland. Uh, he lived in a place where the breweries were in Edinburgh, right next to uh, Lothian Road, <laughs> where the fraud epicentre is. And he's tell Alex Salmond that he'll come back to Scotland if the conditions are right for him to prevail and to thrive with his vast income but he's not going to get stung by tax. Uh, and I'll show you a few pictures of him cuddling Alex Salmond and Nicola Sturgeon. And I'll tell you the little bit of story about the acts of God and pathologies that are quite spooky. <laughs> uh, and they tie in David Murray, the football thief, uh, as well. And the Romanoffs. So let me tell you that little bit of the story. Uh, Sean Connery's had a little heart murmur, a little heart attack, and David Murray eh, has tried to convince him that he can fix it with the wine out of his vineyard. <laughs> eh, now, I've got an alternative theory on where the pathology has come from, but let's not go deeply into that. Let's just show you the pictures that this man is friends of the super elites like David Murray, that is asset stripping everything that is decent and was great in Britain on a global stage that is Rangers Football Clubs, Club and heart of Midlothian Football Club has gone to the Romanoff interests through the Lithuanian Central Bank using frauds that have been completely ignored by the Gorgi police station even although they got my illicit details of what has happened to Hearts Football Club's fans funds. The directors are doing okay. The share price is good and buoyant. I've been told that in confidence. But the fans, like the Rangers fans, get robbed blind. Okay? Uh, now, Sean Connery lived between Gorgie Road, where Hart and Midlothian play, and between the fraud epicentre in Edinburgh sorry, not Gorgie Road and Lothian Road where the breweries were ok, uh, and let me just show you some images of him with Murray there are very few, Murray has vineyards in France his headquarters are in uh, Dunedin for tax evasion reasons and the massive profits that he launders out of these innocent little activities uh, all the ordinary people that are impoverished now in Scotland because of Salmon's crimes in selling his nation to the energy companies for personal gain he's also cuddles uh, the boss at Iberdrola on screen and Gordon Brown sees to it that he gets a visiting professorship at Edinburgh University where the speculative society runs all oh, the corrupted law firms out of Parliament Square and they are persecuting this innocent who is working terribly hard to get them exposed for their multinational pan-continental crimes. Let's show you Romanov. He came to the country in a fucking submarine which is a joke about the uh, local hero film that was made about an oil magnet coming across for America and meeting folk with kelpie and little fins on their feet it's ever so romantic when you're stealing for your fans and your supporters base uh, <laughs> he has now returned to Russia but to Lithuania rather where the central bank is now in the ownership of the EU cabal that is ruining the sovereign prospects of every country across Europe. All of them are greedy bastards. I don't think we've gotten to the picture of the vineyard yet. Well, here we go. 
that's David Murray I have a theory on his amputations as well and the motives behind that he runs a golf course and a donkey sanctuary right next door to the Borders Council who will not allow me to talk to them about their southern debt problems and about why his money is languishing in Dunedin so it's beyond detection and his mate Sean Connery with a heart murmur has got his in the havens in North America that's everywhere from Delaware into Bermuda uh, he's got this ambition to return to Scotland as a patriot hero uh, and that is why on the images I'll show you on my web pages that he's, per he's pictured with Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmon the Quislings that will not free their country from the English tyranny because they're scared to do it I don't care who these people are but that's David Murray again uh, and there's very little imagery of the vi vineyards that he owns in France uh, but <laughs> I do think the therapy has been a great success for Connery but anyway let's get back to the dirty tricks businesses that all of them run and the reason I played the Goldfinger theme is because Ian Fleming is a massive crook that is the war profiteer Ian Fleming involved in the setting up and the running of Operation Winnie the Pooh and all of those things that Greg Hallett has told us about in World War II entirely for profit across international boundaries access countries and allied countries all at the same trough he also lives in the tax havens this is an introduction to an article that Gordon Bowden and I made on the British Syrian Society with links to the Fleming family and who took me into this man David Steele he determines he's a local politician he also determines the future of Edinburgh I don't know whether he's in the speculative society nobody's allowed to know that they have no women and they are now making a fuss about that uh, and they appoint corrupted law firms like Ann Ma Arnott Manderson to persecute innocent investigators like me who have no income at all when these people are stealing from global citizens let me show you the fine details of that so you've heard of Syria I think it's a lot mentioned in the ancient bi biblical texts but the Brits are still in the Holy Lands manipulating the shit out of them and taking every asset from those innocent little countries that they can this is the board of directors and there is Lord David Steele of Aquid Aquid is a keep tower that has been renovated at the public's expense the public sector get no pay rise for seven years back to back but these guys get to tuck it away in the tax havens or in Dunedin <laughs> where we're engaged in massive sport and frauds with Todd Blackadder and the likes because they were trained in Edinburgh in the laundering techniques that these bastards use relentlessly I'm swearing a lot I should calm down ok let's see if there are any other household names uh, but there's David Steele screwing up the building of the new parliament building in Holyrood ten times over budget this is a mistake there is another Sir David Steele who's in charge of the Wellcome Trust I've wrongly accused this criminal of minor crimes in the Wellcome Museum sector the Wellcome Trust is the funding of academic institutions it's a different David Steele unless they've changed it since I reported him as being the criminal there as well as in the Scottish Parliament building and these massive international geopolitical frauds ok uh, I don't think there are very many these are usually indigenous Syrians that are in the transitional regimes that create the floods of refugees fleeing across the border into little plastic shelter homes 
that are funded by the world's greedy, greedy, corrupted banks. Okay? But here we have Ian Fleming. According to Gordon Bowden, Sir Andrew Fleming Green is Ian Fleming. And we've got Sir David Alwyn Gore Booth, Sir Gavin Far Arthur, and Thomas Egger Secretaries. That's the Thomas Egger issues that come into some of my family issues and the laundering issues. And it takes you into leafy Northumberland where Tiny Rollins used to live near Rollins Gill and all the jokes about the sharks with the gills coming out of Oxford rooftops. The fascist jokes are the biggest clue to where they are committing their massive crimes and that is horrendous in the religious sector as you already know. I forgot to show the Rolling Stones and the defoliation videos of the footage of the brutalization of the Golden Triangle entirely for nar narcotic wealth in the last video I made. Uh, so on this web page which is Massive Economic and Business Sector Cons Crimes Against the People uh, it's Professor George Lee's revelations and we've got a couple of videos on the James Bond programs and all of the scams that they commit in uh, in that geopolitical manipulation of Syria involving leading politicians and peers of the realm. Okay, uh, and here we've got a link through to a chap called Khalid Chahabi, uh, a variety of director numbers, uh, registered Northwest 86BU RH101JA, and he's on the British Syrian Society, the Pavilions Management Services Company and a number of interlocking companies uh, and he is involved in hundreds of virtual oil and gas scams according to Buck Gordon uh, and the British Syrian Society was dissolved as late as 2004 now we've had a series of revolutions and uprising in Syria entirely created and manipulated by the West and entirely profiled by the false news industry that is exemplified by Michael Grade and the totally corrupted BBC that is run by Lord Patton. Okay, uh, and Syria manipulated by the West, there's a picture of Hillary Clinton and you now know the hilarious joke perpetrated by the Rothschilds in Spanish and Portuguese naval conflicts way back in the 16th century. The hilarious joke. Edmund Hillary, the cross-gender use of names like Edmund and Anne in the same title for the world's tyrants for centuries. And there you see Ian Fleming that's the man, the Fleming Green, on that board of director, the Knight of Our Realm. Yeah? Uh, and he lives in the tax havens. I forget the name of his island. Uh, Branson is on Necker, and he is, we'll maybe find it on the website profiles. There's Sir David Alwyn Gore Booth on that board of the Future of Syria Foundation right up to 2004 which is the, the year that Tony Blair had already turned his attention onto Iraq and Afghanistan and that is what we send them to help them out in their crisis we send in the no-fly pilots so that they cannot fly to defend, defend their country and we create the refugee camps all of their homes are brutalized by these and we send them into Bank Paribas rental homes or things that are given them from a plastic credit card so that when they get a future, if they ever do, that they owe a huge amount in interest for being sent from their own homes in their own cities into the wilderness on behalf of these people.
and Sean Connery is ever so reluctant to come back to Lothian Road. Maybe it's because he understands the cardiological pathology that he has been exposed to since he aligned himself with David Murray and the crooks at the SNP. I'm saying the crooks at the head of the SNP because they're the only ones I've contacted so far on the Trident scandal. I'm trying to reach out to junior members like Paul Wheelhouse who's now the Assistant Justice Secretary in Scotland and hopefully that will get me some leverage to get some justice done after hundreds of years of cross-border tyranny on every continent. There's the shopping friend of the British elites. Goes shopping with Tony Blair's missus in London and his own missus, both of them were educated at elite Western schools. That's a sad. <laughs> okay, and there he is with the Queen. Yeah, everybody is really friendly to each other in this elite team. Look what their citizens get. A life in a refugee tent. Okay, so then we get a bit more mainstream. A whole list of four Fleming family companies all registered at 15 Suffolk Street, London, Southwest 1, 4HE and Southwest 1, 4HG. Okay, Fleming Family and Partners Limited, Fleming Family and Partners Overseas Limited, Fleming Family and Partners Capital Management Limited, M uh, sorry, LLP, Fleming Family and Partners Wealth Planning Limited. Isn't that a strange thing for profiteers in wartime and in peacetime to be interested in? <laughs> okay, I want you to know that the globalised world is so chaotic it could be ended by nuclear deployment in the massive stocks of weaponry that they have and in the uh, the massive pool of shame that they have embroiled themselves in they're involved in the Trident scandals uh, but that does not involve the Flemings but it does involve both the English government and the Scottish Government. The Scottish Government hosts the nuclear deterrent in Scotland but the company and the laundering operations are run out of Eccleston Square in London. And this book for me was inspiring because it taught me how these fraudsters thrive at the citizens expense. It takes you into colonial Africa with the oil and the uh, issues like the uh, Elf oil film, firm run by the French entirely for profit and how all the prices are manipulated at the forecourt and all of the global citizens pay for that. Gaddafi's people were relieved from it because Gaddafi believed in making things affordable for his own citizens and his off-road vehicles you could fill the fuel tank for only five dollars. Everybody else in the western world cheats its citizens and the boardrooms on these massive companies are inhabited by cheats and war criminals like them which is why I played the gold finger music they privatized America's wealth from the citizens in the lead up to World War II that's FDR in the lead up to World War I they deployed Jews in their supreme courts to spark ethnic hatred against the Germans. He is actually a British agent, according to Greg Hallett and all of his vast body of documented evidence about the training institutions in St. Petersburg and Tavistock in England. Uh, and there's HRH sitting on the horse. Uh, she is totally illegitimate and the family are in the thrall entirely of the breeding chambers run by the money lenders and the assassination bureaus. It is a vicious, vicious world, but only because 
we have no honest journalists anymore. These stories are simple to detect. I've been a fraud researcher and an unpaid journalist for only three years. It is as plain as the nose on your face how the top 1% of the world, oh, much less than 1%, maybe point not not one percent the people that go to Davos every year are the people that steal the world. That's the title of Nicholas Jackson's book is Treasure Islands, The Havens and the Men Who Stole the World. Okay? Some of them are in the female gender, some of them are very up, high up the food chain, and some of them have <laughs> very deviant sex lives, but that does not matter when you're in this team. All of them have deviant sex lives and all of their children and their in-laws are abused because of that legacy. It's to keep them corruptible. Right then. Uh, and it goes way back. The links in the hotel chains now and the slush hotel chain that has taken over our local hotels takes you into the Krups family in Ger Germany. And this is the links between the Bismarck dynasty and the companies and law firms called Slaughter and May. Uh, and Slaughter is one of the companies that is in the magic circle with uh, Freshfields Derringer, uh, Brookhouse Derringer. That's John Lamont's company, uh, and or John Lamont trained there, and he is an advisor to Scottish law enforcement. David Steele was the man who shepherded him into government and into that highly expensive government building that is going to have to be rebuilt within another 10 or 15 years because it's jerry built and it's falling over in the massive winds of change because the gods are angry about all these crimes and even about Sean Connery's desire to evade tax in the havens. Yeah, he's portrayed as one of the world's biggest heroes, like Fleming the author. They are just greedy bastards, like David Murray, which is why two of his legs are somewhere in a shallow grave already. Yeah, he's asset stripped rangers, he's asset stripped massive numbers of companies, and he now runs his profiteering business with the rangers funds in the Murray Investment Trust run through Aberdeen Asset Management with Malky Rifkind on the board like the war crimes inquests and the overlaps with Abraxa and the war crimes inquest chair John Anthony Chilcott and here are some of the victims the Blood Diamonds victims Tim Spicer the mercenary army leader in Africa was on the board of uh, the Trident companies in Eccleston Square in London between 2004, as 2002 and 2007, and they are also involved in massive laundering companies. Uh, and here we've got the links of the Flemings and all the tax evaders to Sir John Craven of Deutsche Bank not this one this one's innocent if he could get the news out for me then all of public sector workers in Britain and all of the kids that he entertains could have a future instead they choose to steal from him so this is John Craven the BBC man yeah this one is a chairman at Longwell for a while before Prince Charles's advisor took over okay on the board at the Deutsche Bank and all of this is absolutely linked in to massive boardroom activities all of the decisions are made in English speaking parliament buildings because the English speaking world owns most of the world that's the pan Anglo-American interests and the G8 countries you've got your in input from Free France from Italy and the Berlusconi dynasty and the crookedness that I've heard about in Italy and where all of the people are imposed austerity 
the politicians are no longer elected, they're just picked out of this group of ruthless circles of friends. Uh, and you can see how well off the companies are, and all of them are out there in the Caribbean somewhere. None of them live and work in England, none of them pay any tax, uh, but they do brutalise other countries to make sure that nothing will change. <laughs> uh, right then, I think that's just about enough. Uh, I, and I can show you all the names here. Some of them die young. If that's the Mervyn Davis that used to play number eight for Wales, I think he died in his late thirties. Uh, and Richards, we've got some Welsh rugby playing names. A number of names in the Fleming family itself. Uh, and they're, you know, they're interlocked with loads and loads of international companies. Drusilla, Charlotte, Jane Rowe, famous names in the laundering. There's the Bismarck woman, Miss Nullifer von Bismarck. Now the Bismarcks were involved in World War One, I, I think, uh, and they were involved with the air balloon issues that we talked about in the religious frauds the other day. Mr. William Arthur Waldergrave, just an ordinary Mr. William. That will be the right honourable William Waldergrave. But every time you have a new director at registration, it's smart to have a subtle little change of ID. Uh, <laughs> and let's keep going, see what else we discover. And they've got loads of employees, which means that somewhere or other, they might actually be making something but I very much doubt it. It's about the control of other people's countries and other people's assets. Lord Robin Rennick of Clifton. Uh, and there you've got a whole range of the Flemings, even on the current officers' names. Uh, that takes you up to 2013 there, uh, when they were appointed. But those are the current board members. Uh, and what else, what else, what else? Oh, this is some of the French frauds involving Anne Laveron and Arriva. Now Gordon gave that woman a hard time because she's been cheating the directors as well as the shareholders and crashing the companies but she's involved in massive frauds. I can't remember exactly what the details are, but if anybody's interested in showing that what Gordon has done with Anne Laveron and the Swiss investigators is just to scratch the surface of her massive scams. I can't remember whether she's in the HSBC or the Rio Tinto British American tobacco cabals, but she's in right up to her neck even after she's been investigated and given a little scolding by Gordon and his colleagues in that Swiss investigator company. Uh, there's Walder Grave, famous name in the old days uh, when David Steele was the head of the Lib Dems. Lord Robin Renwick, J.P. Morgan magnet. Uh, and we've got a couple of much more explicit uh, videos on YouTube on how this has been happening as corporate profiteers and as spies in wartime and in peacetime uh, and all of the fraud and all of the director details uh, and I think that's uh, so this one spills into intrigue and intel our country is so corrupted that all of the telecommunication systems and all of the computer virus systems are scams and are surveilling the people. In New Zealand they've got a 60 million budget for the dot com project which is just keeping an eye out for innocent people like me and hitting on them using every legal tool that you have which still belongs to the Crown. That's the Queen's councillors like uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Peter Williams QC, the man who tried to kill Greg Hallett before he left New Zealand, 
because of Greg Hallett's exposure of how corrupted and deviant the politics in New Zealand were. Okay, so Skype is run out of 204 Woolwich Road, London, SE7 7QY. I have nothing to hide, but all of the people, almost all of the people, apart from the Scottish socialists and people like John Patterson, who I've met on there, have bailed out of my company because I've discovered that their minor criminals or their family members are minor criminals. Some of them are afraid of the really big world owners like Gordon. Gordon is a very well informed man but he likes to work at a really slow pace and to keep talking about the same issues all the time so that you cannot get to the throats of the world's owners and the world's tyrants that brutalise other countries. Uh, <laughs> at the Church of Scotland today we had a stand-in vicar and she gave a good sermon, the sun was out most of the time but she believes that the people who are fighting abroad are foreigners. She does not understand that they are Brits in their colonial or business interests and they are brutalising those countries by habit for millennia. Otherwise the sermon was really good and it's good that she wants peace but she cannot see the religious strife and the holy lands being brutalised is anything to do with Christianity <laughs> which is a massive fraud in itself uh, and all of these families understand that from him which is why they had to do the beheading in, the, in Woolwich to cover up these facts okay there's McAfee Limited the monitors for your computer 204 Woolwich Road London the business directory is there Skypey 204 Woolwich Road London so the beheading was of Gunnar Rigby that's explained in the war widow joke about the Eleanor Rigby song that is sung by the Beatles and the man who lopped her head off in the false news broadcasts entirely by Ingenious Films LLP I wrote letters to the Metropolitan Police who were brought in specially to spark the ethnic hatred in Woolwich as the cover up for these financial crimes and our disclosures the man who lopped the heads off was an Abu Dawali he's on the boards of massive financial fraudsters companies too I can look, look them up if you wish send me an email and I will tell you what, who Abi Dawali does his dirty business for the actor that played the role of the terrorist only had blood on his hands there was no blood on the pavement and the head was never detected <laughs> uh, and all of my correspondence to the Met Police was completely ignored as one would expect like my letters to the Scottish Justice Minister so far in three days I have not had a response uh, and the police in my hometown who promised to phone me and confirm that they had witnessed my attempt to make a statement on crimes involving the Trident scams I'm still waiting for their call okay so and Gmail is also in the network registered along with these other companies and look at the overlaps McAfee's dropped out now trading from somewhere else a lot of the other companies the Chinese and the Australian companies are linked in to a company called ASCIO <laughs> and the watch that's been on my wrist since I was a teenager is an ASCIO watch <laughs> uh, and everything is twisted the innocents get sur surveilled and persecuted and Cameron even although his children die as infants none of them see that God is going to stop this really soon Sean Connery preferred to listen to David Murray and to incur the risk of the heart attack in the tax havens 
than to look at what is happening all around him to the people who are legless in the fraud sector uh, right then and, but David Murray gets some solace from laughing at the donkeys opposite the Scottish Borders Council who he knows is the joke about Jesus Christ that never existed and he's been a full player in the sectarian violence that consumes the supporters of Celtic and Rangers so that they can have a laugh in the tax havens about the massive frauds and their massive wealth ok I'll stop there you can see that all these discussions go back to the same usual cul culprits the thinkers are the people on the boards of the big banks they are also completely ruthless and some of them are field marshals some of them are friends of General Sir Mike Jackson and that takes you into the Chipping Norton set so you can see how the cabal is run the tax havens are occupied by the people who win the contracts the people who give them the contracts are in Chipping Norton drinking with Jeremy Clarkson and Lizzie Murdoch and the Freud family who can get innocence into a straitjacket before the acts of God start catching up with them first yeah you've got dozens and dozens of these elites now on rehab uh, and whether it's genuine or whether it's just a cover for their crimes is not is anybody's guess but Lord Patton has been disappeared as has Lord McAlpine the chief fundraiser for the Tories for nearly 20 years died down near his nudist beach, beach in Australasia where the naked kids are pictured but there are no pictures of anyone at his media funeral because he's never been given one uh, anyway I just want you to know that the Fleming family are profiteers in wartime and peacetime and all of the stories that Greg Hallett has told about them you need to try and find that on Operation Winnie the Pooh and the Nazi laundering affairs the yellow submarine the, the uh, Sunderland float planes the key personnel who got the Nazis out and also that issue about the, the joke in the Godfather film about the body double showing up at the war crimes trials and then convincing the body double that it's more dangerous to confront the Nazi criminal than it is to commit suicide in your bath in the prison it is sick they all laugh at it and the citizens that support hearts do not understand that all they need to do is to bail up their uh, MP and in the Gorgie region it's a quite a famous MP but because of my frail memory I cannot remember who it is it's one of the people that is a leader of society it could be the one with the dark bushy eyebrows uh, but anyway that's speculative and I don't like to be speculative uh, <laughs> but I would like to know the members of the speculative society in Edinburgh who are persecuting me personally through the massive crimes in the law sector in Scotland and their capacity to bang me up as an innocent man because I'm a threat to their illicit system that's the founders of Arnott Manus Man Manderson in the year of the Scottish referendum to lose Scotland its independence campaign that was fully condoned by both Salmond and uh, Nicola Sturgeon and did I show you the pictures already of them embracing uh, No, so let me just see. Uh, Sean Connery and Salmond 
everybody sucks up if they think they're going to get some publicity from it there he is waiting for the right terms and conditions it's amazing how many times he's in the tax paying country to meet its super elites who are banking magnets before they desert the cause of the true patriots that support the SNP many of whom have befriended me in desperation because their leadership teams are quizlings like the Prime Minister in Norway that we talked about yesterday yeah look at the smiles it's so cynical it's incredible eh? but he survived the heart murmur and it would be really good if he could come back and openly lead Scotland to a declaration of why it's fucking busted for cash because of the treason in the parliament buildings both sides of the border ok I don't know who this little kid is but look at the number of times that they meet it's just a photo opportunity that could be the Gorgi MP but I can't mind his name uh, and the Gorgi police got all of my information there's another Bond hero can you see how clever it is they make themselves heroic profiles like the Oscar winning roles for Oscar Schindler and all of the people that were involved in wartime and it is just a massive profiteering exercise like all of the former banking executives engage in from the Deutsche Bank to the Bank Paribas and the plastic refugee hut right then, signing off